fine. Yes, please be advised that 9 to the 4 Charlie Papa is going to be calling this frequency with reports for the various islands. WX4 NAC, K5 SIV. Go ahead, this is WX4 NAC. This is WX4 NAC at the National Hurricane Center listening for any calls. The communication in or out of many hard hit areas is by ham radio. We call them ham radio operators, amateur radio operators. What they do is they can stay in contact with some of these areas affected by the storms, even if they lose electricity or other forms of communication. We thought we were just north of the eye. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. Now we've got a boat pounding on us on the, on the port side. And so, um, yes, I want to stay with you until uh, that subsides over. Uh, wind, repeat the wind, please. Okay, no, uh, torrential rainfall, torrential rainfall at this time, torrential rainfall at this time, you know? Okay, no, uh, WX4NHC, K5, Sugar, Ida, Victor. WX4NHC, go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Joanne, please copy, I'm reporting for Ida, Victor, Sugar, Ida, Victor, Sugar, Ida, Victor, Sugar, Ida, Victor, Sugar, Ida, Victor, Okay, thank you very much, Thank you for the report. Officials at the National Hurricane Center in Miami are keeping a close eye on the storm as it does pass over Cuba. Julia Yarbo is with them tonight. She joins us with the very latest from there. Julia? Well, Tony, you know, given our access to radio, television, and Internet, we may take for granted all the information that's coming out of here at the National Hurricane Center because we have up-to-the-minute information on the strength of Hurricane Charlie, where it's going, what we can expect from it. But what about the people in the islands, like Cuba, the Dominican Republic, Haiti? What type of information do they get? Well, thank goodness they have work coming from here at the National Hurricane Center thanks to amateur radio operators who are also working out of this particular center. Around the clock, these guys, these amateur radio operators, operators come in and on the ham radio system they're able to actually transmit valuable information to people in the islands as well as hear exactly what's happening in those locations operators say those radios fill a very valuable gap between technology and old-fashioned communication case in point transmissions this afternoon give up to the minute information coming in from Cuba we heard this particular operator gather in some information the folks were saying they were already seeing heavy winds some lightning and they were already feeling feeling the outer effects of Hurricane Charlie. And of course, as you mentioned, they are expecting to take quite a brunt of that storm in a short time in Cuba. So a very valuable piece of all of the work that goes on here at the National Hurricane Center. Back to you. Julia, thank Charlie, over the next several hours. Now through a long night, one line to the outside world may remain open even when others are lost. We're talking about the ham radio. Michael Williams checked in tonight with the people manning those microphones in an effort to help Cuba weather the storm. Michael? Good evening, Jackie. The early images of Charlie, the early information about Charlie, will be created out of the crackle of an old-fashioned radio network. WX4 NHC, in frequencia. Even in a space age of satellites and instant communication, the clearest message tonight on Charlie's impact in Cuba might be found in the static of a ham radio transmission. At the National Hurricane Center, amateur ham operators are monitoring chatter from Cuba around the clock. Dr. Jim Hirschman is a semi-retired Miami cardiologist. Their local observations from people on the scene of the affected area uh, telling us the wind, the rain, uh, uh, the disturbances to life and property. Information that as much as these high-tech images help forecasters plot the track and intensity of a hurricane. In Cuba today, from Havana to the western reaches of the island, the government and residents moved to button up property as best they could. Sun Sentinel reporter Sandra Hernandez is in Havana tonight. This city has sort of been transformed into a ghost town. Most people are heading indoors. You see shutters over windows, taped windows. Uh, old Havana is pretty much abandoned. But across the miles, Cubans will at least have a lifeline of information and support through the worst of Charlie. And late word from Havana tonight that a town south of the capital city, Bata Banao, a town of about 22,000 people, has been evacuated because of growing worries about floods, about storm surge, and all the flooding that the rain could bring. The full impact of Charlie expected to be felt in Cuba over the next three to four hours.